I'm kind of nervous. My heart's like beating out of my chest right now. <laughs> but the part of the chapter I want to focus on is there in verse 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. And the title of my sermon tonight is Rahab the Harlot. I'm going to show you that the Bible is consistent. Okay, we're, we're saved by faith and not by works. Amen. Okay, so that's going to be the title of my sermon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically show you that, show you how consistent the Bible is by showing you the story of Rahab. That simple. Now, before I go into Rahab, if no one's really familiar with, with the doctrine of work salvation, I'm going to just briefly explain that. They basically say that you have to believe in Jesus and do good things. Okay, and that's false. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So it doesn't say a way, a light. It says the way. So, you know, people who believe in their works are not putting their full faith and trust on Jesus to get them to heaven. They're putting their faith in themselves and their faith in Jesus. Okay, and that's a problem. It's going to send people to hell. And the one reason you might say, well, you know, why are you so heated about this? J- people use James 2. This is in the Bible, and they're using it to send people to hell. Amen. It's a problem. So I'm going to just, uh, everyone flip to Joshua 2 for me. Joshua 2. All right, we're going to start reading. This is going to be a lot of reading, so just bear with me. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men, talking about the men that, that, uh, that Joshua sent out. She took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not once where they were. So it's a little confusing if you haven't, if you can't, you know, if you're reading this quickly. But she hides the two men that, that, that Joshua sent out. And she, she basically tells a little fib to the spies that Jericho, or not, yeah, not the spies, the uh, the people that Jer- King Jericho sent out so that, you know, they'd go a different way. You know, they'd, they'd leave the people alone or they'd leave her alone. And then we're going to jump down to uh, verse 8. It says, and this is basically what I'm doing here with verse 8, is showing you that Rahab believed God. Okay, this is important because, you know, she's a harlot. She's, everywhere that she's mentioned, she's called Rahab the harlot. Okay, and remember, I'm trying to show you that Rahab was saved by faith. Just like we are. Praise God. So in verse 8 it says, And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Talking to the people that Joshua sent out. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Amen. So this is Rahab saying she believes God. Okay, and she might have done some things. We, you know, we've all done things, you know, but she believed God. It's clear as day. Now, uh, I'm going to read for you verse 12. I'm just going to keep going. Now, therefore, I pray you swear unto swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. So she's asking because she did this favor for the people that Joshua sent out, the spies. She's saying. Since I dealt kindly with you, can you please deal kindly with me by saving my family? And if you read further, you can get that, but I don't want to read that just for sake of time. Now, the reason why this is important 
is because people use James 2 to, pe- to teach work salvation. Yeah. Okay? Now, the reason this part is important is because God, we, we don't get our glory from God because of our works. Okay? And you get that from Romans 4, and I'm going to read that later on so I can kind of prove that point. But basically, Joshua and men, basically men, are the ones that justify Rahab's works. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, I'm going to keep going, and it says, uh, in verse 14, it says, And the men answer her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. So again, this is men promising this to Rahab, okay, not God. Amen. Now, they're doing, you know, obviously they all believe in God. They're doing everything because... I mean, just like us, we do everything that we do because we believe in God. But that's not what saves her. Now, uh, I'm going to continue. Verse 16. And she said to them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuer meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned. And afterward, may ye go your way. Uh, I'm going to keep reading to verse 21. And the meds said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, talking about a future event, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which ye didst let us down from, or let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all the father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, uh, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Scarlet is red, okay? If you don't know what scarlet is, it's, it's a very, very bright. It's not bright red, but it's like a deep red, okay? And they're telling her to put this on her window as, obviously, a symbol of Christ's blood. All you have to do is be in this house, and when they come to destroy the city, no one's going to get hurt in that house. Now, it says right here, if you, if you get out of the house, then their blood is on their own head. So if you don't accept the fact or trust their promise right here of Jesus' blood, I mean, it's symbolic of Jesus' blood, your blood is on your own head, okay? Yeah. Just like today, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ... Your, your blood's on your own head. You'll go to hell just because of you. And it's not anyone else's fault. Amen. Now, I'm going to keep reading. Uh, I believe I was in verse 19. I'll just start over. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head and will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will, be, we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, according to our words, so be it. Or sorry, according to your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet in the line in the window. So, again, all she had to do was put that scarlet on her window, and she's good. All she had to do was trust the word of these two spies and put the scarlet on her window, and she was going to be fine, okay? Right. Now, that takes a lot of faith. I was, I was talking to Megan about this, and that would be like if Pastor Manley came to my house, okay? And he knocked on my door, and he said, Curtis, there's people after me. And, you know, okay, I'm like, all right, I hide him in a closet. <laughs> <laughs> and then two minutes later, you know, knock, 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 it's the FBI. They're looking for Pastor Manley. I'm going to send those people away. I'm going to say, you know, he came, but he went away. I don't know where he went. So that's what I would do. I don't know about you. It just makes sense. But let's say Pastor Manley has to leave, okay, and he has to do some business. And he tells me, look, everything's going to be destroyed. And, you know, everyone knows. I mean, you should know the story of Joshua, you know, and what happens at Jericho at the end. But, well, not really the end, but you know what I'm saying. But let's say Pastor Manley's doing some business. He has to leave, and he tells me, hey, all you have to do is this. And at the end, you'll be all right. I mean, that takes a lot of faith. The FBI's after him. You know, the government's trying to get him. And all I have to do is this one thing, not tell about the business. I mean, it's as simple as that. So uh, go ahead and uh, you can flip to Joshua 6. And remember, I'm trying to show you the story of Rahab 
Because James 2 is often used without fail when you go soul winning, when you meet a Jehovah's Witness, or you meet anyone of the false apostate, you know, Christianity today, they'll point to James 2 and say, this is teaching work salvation. If you don't do good things, you're going to hell, and Jesus' blood isn't enough, is basically what they're saying. So uh, go ahead and go to Joshua 6. You guys should be there. And I'm just going to read one passage out of here, and I'm just going to show you that, again, God is not the one saying, hey, Rahab, good job for sending those people away. That's not what's, saying, that's not what's going on. So in Joshua 6, verse 22 through 23, and I'm going to skip one just for the sake of time, but it says, but Joshua, sorry, but Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, the people that came to Rahab's house, this is who he's talking to, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as ye swear unto her. Talking about the promise that she made or they made to Rahab at that time. And this is, I'm trying to, actually, I should have probably given you a preface. This is the famous story of the walls of Jericho falling and what Joshua did because of his faith to get that city. And this is after they took the city, okay? Just to give you a preface. Sorry about that. So in verse 23, it says, And the the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp uh, of Israel. Skip down to verse 25. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive. Who who saved her? What does that say? Joshua, right. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had, And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Now, do you guys remember what James 2 said? You can go to James 2. James 2 said, Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? Okay? Was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? So who did we read that justified Rahab's works? Was it God or was it Joshua? It was Joshua. I mean, it's clear. And that's what I love about the Bible is it's so consistent. The Bible does not teach work salvation. You say, prove it. Okay, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. I mean, it's just everywhere, everywhere. And then they'll use this one passage, this one little verse, can faith save him? They'll use a question, and it's ridiculous, because obviously it goes down in verse uh, uh, verse 21. "Was Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by his works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled. Ready? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. See right there, faith saved him. I mean, it's ridiculous. They use this one little question. They use this one little question, and they want to stump people. And they want to send people to hell. And honestly, it should make you angry. And I hope that you could... You could use this out soul winning. I mean, you saw how easy that was. It took like not even any time at all. Just read the story of Rahab and you got it. Now, I'm going to read just one more passage. Just go to Romans 4 and then I'm done. Romans 4. And I'm going to start in verse 1. Just pay attention to the words in this passage. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. What did he find? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. It's right there, clear as day. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted on him for righteousness. Amen. Done. Uh, amen. All right. Amen. <laughs>